What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today I have a few things that I want to address on the formula. So um, I honestly guys, I've been busy with the green truck trying to tie up another video for it, another video on my son's car. And so this is really something that's been bugging me. So I want to address it today. It's going to be a pretty simple video. Uh, there's like three things that I want to take care of. But uh, just so you guys can see, I did just get this thing back from window tent. That's actually why it's sitting outside. We've had a ton of heat. I don't know if you could tell by my grass. Completely toast. It's gone, um, which is great because I haven't had to mow it. But uh, it really does wonders for drying out window film. So I just got this thing tinted. Normally I would tint the front windshield as well, but I decided not to on this car. I have said that I may not keep this long. I don't know how long it'll stick around, not really sure. But either way, I did do the sides in 5%, the back in 5%. Yes, that is illegal for those who are viewer that are wanting to know. Uh, it is not legal here where I live. But anyway, let's get on to the things that I want to address. Um, I wanted to show you guys that tent because it definitely does look better with window tent even though it still has bubbles and i literally just got back with it so let's take a look at the first thing i want to address and that is this see this right here i noticed this thing i thought maybe the clip was broken but it's actually not um this thing the somebody i don't know if they had another radio in it so it's got what looks like a Phillips screw in one side or a rivet, not really sure. And then the other side, that looks like a screw out of a house. Uh, so either way, we're gonna take those out and we're gonna replace them with the seven millimeters like this down here that it came with. So I'm gonna take that out real quick and see if hopefully the threads aren't all screwed up, but let's get this out of here and see if we can get this radio to set in here so this panel that it isn't broken actually will set in like it's supposed to. Take a look at what I found when I took it out. Um, it's definitely had a double den radio in it. You see how this, the bottom of the pocket isn't there. Um, at some point somebody had a double den and that may have been the previous owner. He just swapped it back out before I picked the car up. Um, that sucks. I mean, I was gonna put a double den in it at some point, but for now I just want this to work. But if you notice this guy right here, you see that? Um, we're missing that little insert. The cool thing is, is I still have my parts truck down there. I think I have one of these. So I'm gonna go pop one of those out real quick and I think it'll fit right here and we can get the stock seven millimeters back in place in this radio sitting like it's supposed to. Let me show you what was in it though. Check this out. We got one sheet metal uh, or yeah, one long screw that I don't know how it didn't touch the front of the car. We've got a sheetrock screw and then a screw that came with, I'm assuming some sort of radio bezel and then a piece of the radio bezel actually. So <laughs> it's funny how other people fix things, guys. Either way, I'm gonna go grab that piece. We'll see if we can get it in, in place. Now I'm hoping since these trucks were designed in the same era as this car, you see this guy here? That's what we're missing. Look at that. Now we should set back in like we're supposed to. Oh. There's a spot back for the back of the radio to set in that it really needs to go in first. And there we go. So now we have the actual seven millimeters, just like the factory would have used. And it doesn't look all terrible. So let me put the camera down and get these things in. And then we'll move on to the next thing that I wanna address, which has to do with some of the lights that are on on the dash. It's all back in there now. Let's see how much better this fits. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to fit. Not sticking out on one side. The radio was kind of walking in and out when you would give it gas. All right, guys, on to the next thing. Um, one of the things I always do, I'll just tell you that I did this today, but I really can't show you, but I got a new key cut. You can go to your local GM dealer. They have the ability to measure the resistance in the chip and they can cut a new key. I always like to have two sets. I only got one set with this car. So I did get another key as well, but um, let's show you what I want to address. Got the AC on blast because I had to roll with the windows up on the way home. Uh, and it is still working great, by the way, guys. Remember in the last video on this, we put a new compressor on, still working good. So um, let's start it up. So there's two lights that you can see on. There's actually three right now, the seat belt, but that'll go off. The service engine soon light and the low coolant light. Let's go address the low coolant light right now. 
probably dirty under here. This thing's kind of nasty right now, but okay. So when I was under there changing the compressor, I told you guys that I hooked up the low coolant sensor. So on the older models of these, so the 98s, the 99s, they had a coolant uh, sensor right here. You can see it. It's right underneath the neck here and it's kind of a square piece. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that there. All right, so what that did was that measured the amount of coolant. If it ever dropped below that level, that light would go off. Well, the downside, and I think I got a couple theories for why GM went away from this. The first theory is that Dexcool obviously had an issue. It would sludge up when it got any um, oxygen in it and uh, or any kind of air whatsoever. And they would, I'm guessing that thing's completely sludged over. That's why it is not working because I have checked the coolant and the coolant is fine. And when I say I think they did this, um, like on my O2 Trans Am and on my son's car, it doesn't even have this. So it is not something, and if you have to replace a radiator, you can no longer get this radiator with that on it. So what I'm going to do to eliminate that is we are just gonna reach down there and unplug it just like it was before. Um, I know that's not normally how I fix things on this channel, guys, but let me tell you, if GM thinks that they don't need it, on the newer models then why do we need it on the older ones and one of these days i'll get under there and tuck that wire up to where you never even knew it was there for now it's just kind of looped around kind of back where it was it's not going to cause any issues i just don't think it's worth spending 30 i think they're like 30 bucks for a new sensor um and it's a common issue that they go bad some of them even even been bad out of the box so that addresses that the next thing we're going to address though is the service engine light now i haven't i have my theory of why it's on the guy that i bought it from said he deleted the catalytic converters obviously when he put the headers on and he never had the um rear o2s deleted because it's going to see a variance the other thing i noticed it doesn't have the egr you can see the plug on the intake there normally your egr would be plugged right here that's what that guy's for and i'm assuming it had air injection the air injection setup is all gone as well so there's another plug down there so i'm assuming we're going to get a code for the rear o2s um, both uh, driver and passenger side, which would be bank two, sensor two, and bank one, sensor two. Um, I'm thinking we're going to get codes for that. I think we're going to get an EGR code, and I think we're going to get an air injection code. That is what I'm thinking. But what I'm going to do, it's getting a little bit darker. I'm going to pull it into the garage. I'm going to go grab my laptop. I'm going to show you guys through the process of how I scan it and see exactly what codes we need to take off to eliminate that light. Now that we've got the laptop out here, Hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see this um, just because the windows make it really dark. I should have done this video before I had the windows tinted is what I should have done. All right, under your dash, you're gonna have a diagnostic port, guys. Um, on these cars, it's over here on the right side. I'm using my old school HP tuners cable. Um, the new ones, there's been two versions come out since this one. This is the original. Uh, it's the Pro Suite. I'll list the newest version down in the description down below. And then if there's anything else in this video I used, I'll try to list it in, in there as well. But HP Tuners is the main thing we're using here. So once we have it plugged in, you should get uh, power, even without it plugged in the laptop. I always like to plug it in here first to know if we have power. If you guys are not getting power to this, generally that means one of your fuses is blown. 99% of the time, it's the one for the cigarette lighter adapter. They run on the same circuit. So once we do that, we need to plug this into the side of the laptop and then we'll show you what we need to do next. Once you get your laptop um, plugged in, you need to open HP Tuners. Now, I don't know where you guys have it stored. You may have it as an icon on your desktop. I don't. Uh, there's two options here. There's an editor and a scanner. Okay, so the very first one I wanna open is the scanner. And so in order to do that, we need to put our key in and just turn it to the run position. I have to turn my air back on. So you can see that my uh, light went off also, guys, for my low coolant really weird that you can just unplug that and that happened but let's hit the scanner now that the key's in we're opening the scanner we're going to go here to the top to the little car looks like a little car icon up top here and we're going to connect hopefully it's going to read what type of vehicle this is and it'll populate at the very top line up here we'll see what it says yep 99 pontiac firebird formula trans am 5.7 so here's what i want to do up here, there's a little check engine looking icon. Looks like an engine. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna click read DTCs down here at the bottom, which is read diagnostic trouble codes. All right, here's what we've got. We've got 
O2 sensor, bank one, sensor two, history. So that's a P0141. We got a P0405. That's an EGR. That's what I was talking about that went in the middle of the intake. We got a P0410. That's the secondary air injection. Like I said, the air injection pump that normally pumps air into the top of the headers is gone. And then we have a P1415, which is a secondary air injection um, system bank one, same situation. It's all based on that air injection. There's a motor that goes under the driver's side fender in the very front. You guys have seen me take out on this channel. If not, you can go back and check out the red Trans Am. I took it out on it. I took it out on the white convertible recently. And I also took the EGR off and I took, um, I put, I don't, I guess I put headers on the Trans Am and I showed you guys that, but either way, I'm going to clear these out. It doesn't matter. They're going to immediately come back, but I cleared them. And so now when we start it, our service engine light is off. However, it's gonna come back. So anyway, here's what we need to do now. We've got that, we know what we need to take off. So we're gonna open this up again. We're gonna go down to HP tuners and we're gonna op open up the editor file. And so once we do that, Make sure your key is in the run position. The car's not running. We're going to read this VIN or read this uh, PCM, the computer, to get the info off of it. So if you go down up here to the little icon that looks like a green arrow going up, that means download or read. We're going to see if it'll read this thing. Hopefully it will. And it is. These older ones, guys, will take some time. You'll also see that my TCS light, check gauges light, those are staying on. You might see some weirdness. You might hear the pump, the fuel pump cycle, uh, but that's normal. And I'm not going to make you guys watch all one minute and 30 seconds of this. Um, what we'll do afterwards, once it open, it'll actually open the file up. We're going to go to file, and I'm going to save this as stock 99 formula you can save it as whatever whatever you want but i'm just going to put stock 99 formula because this is the stock file it's never been messed with one other important thing i completely forgot to mention guys make sure that your battery is in good operating order turn all the extra stuff off turn your um, headlights off if they're on radio ac uh, try not to bump the cable either here or down where it's connected in the uh, diagnostic port uh, any interruption could cause you issues. So these older computers are more commonly brickable, as they call it. And you'll see when we go to write, it's going to say brickable. I'm sure it will anyway. Um, when that's the case, you don't want to interfere with anything going on. You don't want any low voltage. You don't want to bump any cables. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the pump running. Our service engine light came back. But like I said, I'm going to save it as stock. 99 formula and I have a spot that I put these all the files that I do I'm um, for now I'm just gonna put it on the desktop all right so now we need to we need to take those codes out so it doesn't recognize that it's missing those things now look guys I am NOT a tuner at all right I have GP tuning does a majority of my stuff and uh, so basically I scan it, log it, send him a file. He makes adjustments. He sends it back. Adjustments for tire size, I'll change. Adjustments for um, maybe fan settings, turning off sensors or turning off things like this. I'm only turning off rear O2s. I'm only turning off EGR. I'm not messing with anything like knock sensors. Some people turn everything off. And I'm not saying to do that. Do not do that. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do that. But as far as these, we're just turning the the light off essentially so instead of it coming on and me having to stare at it all the time i want to turn that off so if you remember we need to go through this list and i i won't make you guys go through and watch all of the ones that i delete okay but i'm going to show you at least one or two of them so if you see we're down to p0131 and i am under the engine diagnostic tab under dtc is the tab at the top for diagnostic trouble codes so if we scroll through these o2 sensors any of them that say bank one sensor two or bank two sensor two, we can go over here and unclick this box and we can go to change this to no error reported. That's generally what I change it to. Same thing on this one. And you can notice that they go 
uh, pink to let you know that you've changed something. So we're going to go through and do every single one of those that we were having issues with that popped up. And like I said, I'm not going to make you guys watch all of them because there will be several. There's a list on LS1 Tech of the things that you can delete if you guys want to go look at that list. Uh, but I'm going to go through this, delete all the ones or at least uncheck the box, put nowhere reported on all of those. And then I'll come back and show you what the next step is. So I've got everything um, turned off that we need. A good, a good quick way, guys, to know whether it's enabled or not is if you just look at the checked boxes, that will show you if that's something that was ever even turned on. Generally, if the box isn't checked, it'll say no error reported. And you'll see that there's several. The air injection, guys, has several codes um, quite a ways down. Every one that you see that's pink in this list, I'm turning the, the air code off. I know that looks like a lot. That's all air injection and that EGR that's been removed. And so now that we've done that, um, I may look at our rear tire size. I'm going to close this. It'll stay saved. Uh, well, it's not actually saved, but it'll stay uh, as long as the computer doesn't turn off. If you go here to calibration, you can open up this um, revolution. So trans revolution divided by mile. And if you click this or click tire size, I think that'll open a calculator if I remember right. No, it's not doing it. No, I may be wrong. I think there is a units option up top. Tools, unit conversion. Okay, here we go. So you have um, tire size up here. If you open this tools the very top, that will open this unit conversion. You go down to unit conversion. You can put in your tire size here and it'll give you the tire height. And then you can put your tire height in and get the formula for how it's figuring this number right here. I don't even think I'm gonna mess with that because I think it's pretty close. I don't really have any issues with the way it shifts or anything. So I'll probably leave it alone for now. So what we need to do is we need to save this file. So what's gonna happen is when we close all this stuff and we go up here, file, and then save as, it's saying, wait a minute, you don't have a license for this car. Okay, so you can't save this file until you license this VIN number. So if you go down here and hit show options, I actually still have two credits left um, from a previous vehicle. And so you can click, oh, never mind, it says I don't have any. So I need to get some. I'm gonna purchase these credits. You can click the link online and go online and purchase some. I thought I had already had to, but I guess I used them on something else. So I'm not gonna go through that, guys, because it uses my credit card. I'm not gonna show you guys that. I know you'd love to have my credit card information. You could just charge some stuff, but not gonna do that. We'll go ahead and get that file um, or the two credits that we need to do this vehicle. You only need two credits on these older things. Once we do that, though, let's say I already had those. If we go up here to help, you go down to the MVI keys, so application keys. We would click on that and then we can copy and paste it in here and put add key that will add the credits and then we can go back and save it. So I'm gonna get to that point guys and then we'll come back and show you the me flashing it into the actual computer, making those changes. We'll start it up and see if the service engine soon light goes away. We may have to clear it one more time but it should go away and stay away at that point. At this point, I got this one of these long codes through my email after ordering the credits, and we have to paste that in here. I generally copy it, guys, and paste it instead of trying to read it off and key it in because it's alphanumeric, and it's a pain in the butt to remember it or try to enter it. I've got it entered. Uh, so now we should be able to go back up here to File and Save As, and it's saying, okay, we're going to show you options again. And you can see now that the specific is not grayed out. So it's saying, do you want to license this vehicle? This guy right here, you need to double check this VIN. Is this the VIN on the car? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure, and it is, I just checked the last six. We're going to go ahead and say yes. And it's gonna pop up and say, are you sure? Because we can't undo this. Once you do this, we can't undo it. I'm gonna click yes. So now, I can save stock formula and I'm going to put R for revision one. I'm going to save it to the desktop again. And now it's saved. The file name will change at the top. 
Um, we can close all this out and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the key back in, turn it to the run position. I am now going to go up here to the arrow that points down and it's red. And we want to write this file into the car. Now I'm just going to write the calibration because I didn't make any major changes. Um, anytime you make a ton of changes, you probably would want to click this drop down and hit right and tire. Uh, when you click that, it's going to say brickable. Generally, when we do just the calibrations, that brickable goes away because it's not as strenuous on the old school computer. Uh, these things are getting old. So I'm going to click right and we're going to hope that it goes through. And how I'm going to tell this, guys, I'm going to write this in. I'm going to turn the key off. Shouldn't take long for just the calibration only. I'm going to write this. I'm going to turn the key off. I'm going to give it about 10 seconds. I'm going to start it. Once I start it, I'm going to shut it back off, and we're going to scan it again, just like if we would never scan it. And I'm going to check and see if that stuff's turned off in the new file that it pulls out. Okay, we are complete. I'm going to close this. I'm going to turn this off. I took the key completely out. Give it a couple seconds. We're going to start it up. Notice my light's gone. Both my lights, actually. Just want to make sure everything's good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, we're going to close this file, close. And we're going to pretend that we didn't even hook to this. So we're going to hit read again. Now this is going to take another minute and 30 seconds. I know uh, I won't show you guys that, but then once we read it, I'll come back and we'll check and make sure that all those things that we turned off are still indeed off. So here we are back. Um, basically where we started, I'm going to hit this diagnostic tab. I'm going to scroll down to ones that we knew were on there. Let's go to P405, P0405. It is turned off. So guys, that went into the computer. So that's why we don't have the service engine lights on right now because I just have the key turned. But uh, one quick thing I always do, you can see that I had my HP tuners website open. That's where I got the credits. And they're, just so you guys know, they're $49 a piece. It takes two to do one of these cars. So about $99, 98 bucks, what you're gonna spend. I think they're $49.99. Um, we're gonna go back to the scanner. And with the scanner, I want to open this up again. So I'm going to connect to the car again. I'm going to go to the diagnostic trouble codes and I'm going to delete them one more time just because a lot of times they come back as soon as you start it. Oh, there's none. So good. I just wanted to make sure I just double check. So we should be good. Let's key it up and see if our service engine light goes away. Check it out. No lights exactly what I was wanting guys. I was so, I was getting so tired. You know, the downside to the service engine soon light being on for stuff like that is you never know if something actually, something else is maybe going wrong. So like, let's say um, something else failed that you may want to fix. If the lights on all the time, you're never going to know if let's say a knock sensor is bad and you're getting timing pulled because of that, because I don't keep a scanner hooked up in this thing all the time. So if something else goes bad, I want to know. So I want that light to pop up and say, hey, go see what's going on. You know, if, does it need an ox sensor? Does it need an ox sensor harness? Is there a, a misfire? I mean, generally you'll tell that because the service engine light will flash if it's getting a misfire like in real time. But I want to know if something's bad that I haven't checked. So that's why I like to have that thing off. Well, guys, that about wraps it up. Uh, like I said, I just wanted to show you, I know it's kind of echoey. I've got the garage closed because it's nighttime and I don't want a bunch of bugs in here. But um, like I said, there's a couple annoying things that were bothering me about this car and I'm between some big projects. I've just went recently went on vacation for a week, so haven't had a ton of time to film. Like I said, been working on the green truck to try to start finishing it up as far as the power window swap. I've uh, been working on my son's car, which you guys have been seeing on the channel. Um, you know, we ran into some snags with it needing a new motor. And uh, so anyway, we've been working on both those things and I just don't have enough, in my opinion, to edit, like to edit up a video and show you guys because I haven't made a ton of progress on those. So it was a good time to do this. Like I said, I wanted to show you guys the window tint anyway. It definitely looks better with the window tint. Guys, I am still searching for another set of wheels. I think, you know, I had said I wanted to sell this thing and I even talked about that at the beginning of this video. I, I probably still am going to end up selling it. 
Um, it would take something drastic for me not to, but I think if I got some different wheels and tires, these are 19s all the way around, and it rides so incredibly rough with these wheels and tires. There's just not much tire there. A lot of people don't know but uh, or don't think about this, but your tire plays so much of a role in the way your vehicle rides. Um, when you get these little low profile tires, it's gonna ride way different than if, you know, if I had a 17 on here, which would still look good, I'd love to find a set of stock wheels. Been looking for a set of stock WS6 wheels, exactly like what's on the wall, actually, is my hose reels. Those just are broke and cracked from a wreck. I bought those four hose reels. So, uh, but anyway, guys, hopefully you're enjoying this video. Like I said, sorry I wasn't able to bring you uh, something on the, on the Camaro or something on the green truck, but they are coming very soon. So guys, if you are not subscribed, please go down there and hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. While you're down there doing all that, guys, make sure you ring that bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.